Hello, my name is Daniel Ionita and in this ninth episode of our journey through Romanian poetry in English we will talk about and hear poems from the poet Nikita Stănescu. After Mihai Minescu there are two or three other poets whom the public and the critics might consider for the silver medal position for Romanian poetry, so to speak. Uh, poets from whose work almost every Romanian can recite you at least some fragments. Nikita Stănescu is one of them. March 1933, December 1983. He lived for 50 years and died of chronic liver disease. Stănescu was an inveterate alcoholic. He was the ultimate in what people might stereotypically imagine a poet to be. Extremely creative, extremely disorganized, naive, crashing on sofas at friends' houses who were more than happy to host him for weeks or even months. Living a somewhat bohemian lifestyle but without any affectation, he was the ultimate natural poet. Everything he did was naturally, nothing forced, no pretense. He respected people and took them seriously, to the point of generously associating in print with writers who were well beneath his level. He was friends with everybody and most people, both those who met him and those who only heard about him or just read his poems, still to this day, almost 40 years after his death, simply call him by his first name, Nikita. As Jesus Christ is mostly called Jesus, so Nikita Stănescu is, to most people, simply Nikita. Such was the poet and such was the man. Nikita Stănescu is almost certainly the most important Romanian poet of the second half of the 20th century, writes uh, literary historian Petre Angel. Big words and almost certainly true. Here is a collection of comments from the two most senior contemporary critics, Alex Stefanescu and Nicolae Manolescu. He appeared when there was a need, a vacuum to finally say something new, and he did it brilliantly. His poetry is original, exuberant, brilliant. His poetic voice is the easiest to recognize and the most difficult to mistake. He created a poetic language as free and as delightful as the birds fly through the air. He does not resemble other poets, rather he resembles the poetic spirit of the 20th century through the intense desire to extend the poetical possibilities. Nikita Stănescu was a virtuoso of surprise. This uh, lofty position is contested though by two critics who specialize in poetry as different to Manolescu and Stefanescu who are generalists. They are Gheorghe Grigurcu and Marin Mincu, who say things like Nikita Stănescu is the biggest illusion of our current critique. He does not have enough depth and his emotional span is very narrow. He is very wordy, they say. Now, here is my contention, my opinion, my two bobs worth. Nikita Stănescu displays smooth-as-silk skill, though by no means benign, which is a good thing. Secondly, he is amazingly original, amusing, surprising, challenging, never boring, and on those counts alone I would have to agree with Petre Angel that he is the most important Romanian poet of the second part of the 20th century. Would I agree with Alex Stefanescu that he is the most important poet since Eminescu? I am mm, not so sure, which means no. There would be for mine at least a couple of other contenders for this rank, one of them Tudor Arghezi, whose poetic palette is certainly broader. I will share with you 
one example of Nikita's surprising and delightful personality. Let us also call him Nikita like everyone else. This one I heard directly from the mouth of the man it happened to, a literary critic Alex Stefanescu. It was in the mid-1970s when Alex was just a young sub-editor for an important literary magazine, which months before asked Nikita for 10 original poems to do a feature on him. Nikita said yes, absolutely, with pleasure, as he normally did. But the deadline was fast approaching and there was no sign from the poet. Again, this was usual. The editor-in-chief sent Stefanescu on an errand to remind the poet about his promise. As Alex got there, Nikita said, Oh, of course, how could I forget? Sit down, please, and uh, I will do them for you right now. And over the next few minutes, he composed and wrote the poems on individual sheets of paper, just like that, flawlessly. All original masterpieces, no duds, no shortcuts, no repeats. But he wrote 11 of them, not 10. Nikita then gave them to the young editor to read, which Alex did with absolute awe. After finishing the last one, the 11th, Nikita asked, which one did you like best? Alex took one of them from the pile, the one which impressed him the most. Okay, recite that to me, please, said uh, the great poet to Alex, and he complied. After he finished, Nikita clapped enthusiastically, thanking Stefanescu for his marvelous rendition. Then he asked for the sheet, picked up his cigarette lighter, and lit it up, letting it burn until the fire consumed it all. The poem, the best of them, was gone. Alex Stefanescu was absolutely stunned. This, Nikita said, looking at the young man with his piercing blue eyes and pointing to the ashes of what was, just seconds ago, a masterpiece. This was just for the two of us. How could one not love such a man, such a poet. Upon his untimely, though not unexpected, death, the whole nation was in mourning. Different to the funeral of Eminescu, almost a hundred years earlier, where only a handful of people were present, the interment of Nikita Stănescu was attended by a huge multitude, and even the Romanian president, dictator Nicolae Ceaușescu, sent a wreath though Nikita never wrote socialist poems. Almost needless to say, but the uh, testament, 400 years of Romanian poetry, contains four of uh, Nikita Stănescu's poems. He is only one of a handful from over 380 poets in this volume, represented uh, with the maximum. I will recite all of them to you. Uh, they span most of his poetic palette, from the comical to the philosophical, and for Stanescu uh, it was just a small step between the two. Uh, and then a couple of romantic ones. As usual, I will start with the versions in English, and for those of you who endure, uh, there'll be the Romanian originals at the end. Enjoy! The Fifth Elegy I have never been angry with apples for being apples, nor with leaves for being leaves, nor with shadows for being shadows, or with birds for being birds. But the apples, the leaves, the shadows, the birds suddenly became angry with me. Behold, I find myself taken to the tribunal of the leaves, the tribunal of the shadows, apples, birds, round tribunals, aerial tribunals, thin tribunals, cool ones too. I find myself 
condemned for ignorance, for boredom, for restlessness, for stillness. Sentences written in the language of pips, prosecution documents signed and sealed with the innards of birds, cool grey penances are portioned to me. I am standing, my head uncovered, I am attempting to decipher what I deserve for ignorance, and I cannot, I cannot decipher anything, and this frame of mind in itself gets angry with me and condemns me to a perpetual weight, to a tenseness of meanings within themselves, until they take the form of apples, leaves, shadows, birds. Ballad of the Tomcat A tomcat I desire to be, with upper tail, a stripy coat, long claws, long whiskers, hissy throat, with eyes, one green, one brown, you see? Precisely when the snowy night towards the sleep of dawn is creeping, me, up on top of roofs, in flight, the moon with howl, in senseless weeping. Then seven housewives, devilish spree, will hurl their seven stones at me, and will in silence cuss and weep, because I howl and stop their sleep. But from the height of the week's disasters, I'll green a howling dark and vile. I love the place and not the masters like dogs who for a bone will smile. A tomcat I desire to be, with upper tail, a stripy coat, long claws, long whiskers, hissy throat, with eyes, one green, one brown, you see? When early rays the day assail, I'd wander giddy, where to next? I'd tie a tin onto my tail to rattle on the streets, perplexed. Besmirched and tired in a while, my gut from growling to divert, I'm gathered up, I spit my bile and drag their linen through the dirt. When on the streets I gallivant, if rats annoy me with their rant, I'll spit, I'll spit, and then I'll cry, my back I'll camber hard and high. The cats from seven neighborhoods I'd chase around and to the woods, a kitten each to cub for me, with eyes, one green, one brown, you see? Forgotten, when I'll die in vain, up near the tavern in the slum, laid in the way of fists to drain the sour swill, the vile scum. Oh, well, that's life. Out from your tent, let's dance again, don't jump with dread. Look down the drain and don't lament. A tomcat dead. A tomcat dead. Sentimental story. Later we met more often. I stood on one side of the hour, you on the other, like two handles of an amphora. Only words flew between us back and forth. Their swirling could almost be discerned, and suddenly I would lower a knee and sink my elbow to the ground, only to observe the grass tilted by the dive of some word, as though by the paw of some lion in flight. The words spun, they spun between us back and forth, and the more I loved you, the more they repeated in an almost invisible whirlpool, 
the structure of matter from its beginning. Moon in the field. With my left hand I turned your face towards me beneath the tent of the sleepy queen's tree. And if my gaze could leave your eyes and wonder, the sweep of even sky would velvet be. I would imagine fathoming through branches strong hunters chasing lions in their might, on horseback pulling strings of bows and arrows. Oh, stretch your left hand, let them go tonight. Extinguish the thin frame of musty willow with all its twigs and branches set afire to climb under the moonlight on wild horses and wantonly pursue their own desire. I'm gazing at your eyes and around us trees are waning. The moon and me reflecting into your eyes, profound. Your eyelashes could crush us as you gaze absent-minded, but gently then my left hand has turned your face around. A cincia elegie. N-am fost supărat niciodată pe mere că sunt mere, pe frunze că sunt frunze, pe umbră că e umbră, pe păsări că sunt păsări, dar merele, frunzele, umbrele, păsările s-au supărat deodată pe mine. Iată m-a dus la tribunalul frunzelor, la tribunalul umbrelor, merelor, păsărilor, tribunale rotunde, tribunale aeriene, tribunale subțiri, răcoroase. Iată-mă condamnat pentru neștiință, pentru plictiseală, pentru neliniște, pentru nemișcare. Sentințe scrise în limba sâmburilor, acte de acuzare parafate cu măruntaie de pasăre, răcoroase penitențe gri hotărâte mie. Stau în picioare cu capul descoperit, Încerc să descifrez ceea ce mi se cuvine pentru ignoranță și nu pot să descifrez nimic. Și această stare de spirit, ea însă se supără pe mine și mă condamnă indescifrabil la o perpetuă așteptare, la o încordare a înțeleselor în ele însele, până iau forma merelor, frunzelor, umbrelor, Păsărilor. Balada Motanului Motan mi-aș fi dorit să fiu cu coada în sus, cu blana în dungi, cu ghiare și mustețe lungi, cu un ochi verzui și un ochi căprui. La ora când târâși, grăpiși, zăpada nopții se adună, eu, cocoțat pe acoperiș, să urlu apustiu la lună. Și atunci, șapte gospodine să dea cu bolovan în mine și să mă înjure surd de domnul că le-am stricat urlând tot somnul. De sus din vârful săptămânii să le rânjesc urlat, scârbos. Iubesc doar locul, nu stăpânii precum fac câinii pentru nos. Și iarăși șapte gospodine să dea cu bolovani în mine, iar eu să urlu, urlu într-una atât cât nu apune luna. Motan mi-aș fi dorit să fiu, cu coada în sus, cu blana în dungi, cu gheare și mustețe lungi, cu un ochi verzui și un ochi căprui. Când... Zorii ziua o deznoadă, să mă tot duc, să mă tot duc și tinicheaua prinsă în coadă să o zdrângănesc pe străzi, năuc. 
jegos și obosit apoi cu mațele în liturghie să mă adun, să mă încovoi prin albiturile în frânghie. Ca în fața unui șobolan, spinarea să mă fac colan, să scuip, să scuip și în urmă iar hai hui să plec pe străzi hoinar. Pisicile de prin vecini să le gonesc pe la pricini, să-mi fete fiecare un pui cu un ochi verzui și un ochi căprui. Iar când o fi uitat să mor la cârciuma din Mahala, sorbită în calea pumnilor, poșir că acră vin să stea. Hei, viață, viață, ești în cort și pune-mi te iar pe danț. Te uită, zace colonșanț, motanul mort, motanul mort. Poveste sentimentală Pe urmă ne vedeam din ce în ce mai des. Eu stăteam la o marginea orei, tu la cealaltă, ca două toarte de amforă. Numai cuvintele zburau între noi, înainte și înapoi. Vârtejul lor putea fi aproape zărit și deodată îmi lăsam în genunchi, iar cotul mi-l înfigeam în pământ numai ca să privesc iarba înclinată de căderea vreunui cuvânt, ca pe sub laba unui leu alergând. Cuvintele se roteau, se roteau între noi înainte și înapoi și cu cât te iubeam mai mult, cu atât repetau într-un vârtej aproape văzut structura materiei de la început. Luna în câmp Cu mâna stângă ți-am întors spre mine chipul sub cortul adormiților gutui și de-aș putea să-mi rup din ochii tăi privirea, văzduhul serii mi-ar părea căprui. Mi s-ar părea că deslușesc prin crenge zvelți vânători în arcuiții lei, din goana calului cum își subție arcul, o, tindeți mâna stângă către ei, și stinge tu conturul lor de lemn subțire pe care ramurile l-au aprins, suind sub lună în seve cai repezi ce au rătăcit cu timpul pe întins. Eu te privesc în ochi și în jur se șterg copacii. În ochii tăi cu luna mă răsfrâng. Și ai putea, uitând, să ne strivești în gene, dar chipul ți-l întorn pe brațul stâng.